Can you hear me? Yeah, I still hear you, of course. And we have now the number of participants is increasing. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is your contact from Lyon, Mille. I've been bombarding you with emails <laughs> this couple of days. Um, but all in your favor, because you're about to attend a very beneficial, amazing webinar, actually. Uh, in the background, you can see something I yeah, I'm a complete amateur, but I'm playing around with data. In the background, you can see, for example, um, I made a research for Omani family names and where they which cities, which towns in, in Oman. And I just put together a short dashboard, and this is what you see in the background, just to explain. Um, I suggest we wait for a couple of minutes because the number of participants is increasing. And I think we will start in maybe three minutes. So with me, be patient, please. Uh, we'll have the webinar started in two or three minutes. Enjoy the animation now. <laughs> All right, I'm just joking here, but the number of participants is around uh, 115 right now. So uh, I'll use this couple of minutes to explain. The first 45 minutes, uh, it will be a presentation from Mr. Hamid Beheri about Power BI, about the, the benefits of the program, of course, how you can use it for data visualization, data mining, uh, data analysis. Then we'll continue to answer uh, most, if not all of your questions, which you can, by the way, uh, you can post them in the Q&A section. I think you can all see the Q&A section down below. So there's a chat, of course, but there's a Q&A section as well. Please use the Q&A section so you can put your question, whatever it is, regarding Power BI. And then at the end of the first hour, I'll revise the questions. Uh, and uh, Mr. Hamet will, will answer all of them. I'll uh, even give you some of you, of course, the right to enter into a discussion if you have some more interesting questions, maybe some suggestions and so on. So all of this will take, take part in after the first 45 to 50 minutes all of the interaction, because of course, uh, Mr. Hamad will first want to, to convey the message uh, to present Power BI properly before we engage in interaction. I hope you understand. So let's wait for just one as the number of participants already 140 almost. I'm expecting around 200, so let's give these guys a chance. Maybe they have some trouble with the laptop or something. Okay, so a couple of questions in the chat. Um, I'll just answer them. Uh, the whole training, the whole webinar should take around an hour and a half. Uh, the quality of my mic might not be the best, but Ahmed has a better one for sure. So don't worry, you won't be seeing or hearing a lot from me in, in the next hour and a half. And all right. So just to clarify, uh, you will not need any additional resources for this webinar. During the presentation, uh, note down some questions you want to ask during the presentation. Ask them in the Q&A section, and we'll get to the interactive part later. So, Hamid, I think I can put you on right now. We have more than 160 participants already, which is fine, and we can continue. All right, you're on. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening uh, for everyone participating. I think we have about 26 or 27 countries from all over the world participating in this webinar. Uh, just would like to take the first 30 seconds uh, to give our prayers, whatever our faith, to the patients of the coronavirus. 
and our respect to all the doctors and the frontline medical personnel that's fighting this disease on behalf of all of us. So I want to take the first 30 seconds, please, uh, uh, in complete silence. And in your prayers, remember uh, those who are patients. And please respect the rules wherever you are. Uh, this is for your own safety. And let's take 30 seconds of silence, please. Thank you. All right, so what's the story? Back to action. We are talking about one of the most important topics that can affect your career in the coming couple of years. So it's not like something nice that you are attending for a couple of hours and off you go again to your ordinary life. Uh, this is uh, a game changer, um, the whole topic of business intelligence and Power BI. So we have trained about 560 people in different countries around the world on this topic. And what we get from the response of these delegates is that it has changed their careers. Uh, particularly at this turbulent time of coronavirus, um, companies are increasingly having this worry that they will not be able to sustain all of these number of employees that they have. So each and every single employee of the company must be really value added. And this is one of the best ways for you to add value to your companies. Um, so business intelligence is not a choice anymore. It's a must to be involved uh, with as a business profession. I will say that the gap between Excel and the pen and paper. So previously we had pen and paper and then we had Excel. The same gap between pen and paper and Excel is the same gap between Excel and Power BI. It's that much of a gap. So imagine that you are a master of pen and paper in all of your reporting and you come to me asking for a job. You will never hunt a job with your pen and paper. So you need to have the Excel capability in order for you to hunt a job in terms of reporting in many companies around the world. The same gap is exactly the same now happening with the business intelligence and on top of it is the Power BI. So I, that I want to confirm this to you. So I will share with you now a screen that shows the, uh, the top 10 emerging jobs by the year 2022, the most sought after job titles by the year 2022 and the declining ones. And this is not my wording, this is coming from the World Economic Forum back in 2018 when they said by the year 2022, what would be the most sought after job. So let me share with you the screen uh, uh, quickly to show you what I'm, I uh, talk about. Here is the screen that uh, talk about this topic. This is the jobs landscape in 2022. This is the top 10, data analysis and uh, uh, scientists, which is predominantly the business intelligence. And if you just go through the top 10, you will see a lot of them talk about the data. So artificial intelligence, machine learning, and then you have uh, software applications, you have the big data analysis, uh, digital transformation, uh, and information technology services. These are the top 10 emerging uh, uh, jobs by the year 2022. And the top 10 declining jobs, accounting, bookkeeping, administrative work, anything that's repetitive in nature is going to be fully streamlined and automated. So you are talking about one of the most important job titles that will be there in, in a couple of years. I'm not saying in 10, 20 years, that's in a couple of years. So that's immediately touching your career. So you are going to be the pen and paper master in the era of Excel if you are not in this business intelligence uh, 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 in this case. So, okay. Now business intelligence tools, there are a lot of business intelligence tools that are available out there in the market. And we can say that we are talking now about the top of them. Let me confirm it by, uh, uh, a report done by Mr. Gartner, who is the best in the world in terms of comparison between different business intelligence tools. Check this, please. This is very recent. This is in February 2020. That's just uh, uh, a couple of months ago. And this uh, guy is comparing between the different business intelligence tools that are available out there in the market. And you can see the Microsoft Power BI on top of the chart. Uh, its biggest rival is Tableau. It's also uh, uh, good, but still Microsoft is way better. Microsoft really started from where every other business intelligence tool ended up with. You can see SAP here, IBM, Yellow Fence, Salesforce, MicroStrategy. You will find some companies that are really comfortable with these business intelligence tools and they don't want to change basically because of the knowledge barrier. Like this is what I have been doing for a couple of years. I don't want to change to any other tool. This is the best tool that I'm using for years and I'm going to stick to it. But this, this chart really explains to you that the best of, the, of them in the market is the Microsoft Power BI. 
So I'll talk about the most important topic that's affecting your career in the coming couple of years. And we'll talk about the best tool that can uh, allow you to make use of this business intelligence tool. Okay, what is the story of business intelligence? So after you now know that this is very crucial for your own career, and we are talking about the best tool to, uh, uh, to fulfill this business intelligence uh, gap in your knowledge uh, in your companies. So what's the story? Basically, you are going to convert your data into very valuable information that will be uh, uh, helping your decision makers to make decisions that are timely, that are accurate, and they are uh, 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 what we are always going uh, to say unbiased, like the human error element of any uh, business intelligence tool will be dramatically minimized compared to doing these kind of reports every single uh, month, for example. So these days are gone. So you all what you're going to do is to suffer to create the first uh, model, the first report, and with just one click of refresh, all of this has been streamlined. So the cost that you have saved, the decision making that is uh, way faster now, the revenue uh, uh, generation that is increased, your understanding of the customers and your customer complaints uh, has increased sharply. So for various reasons, actually, companies are using the business intelligence. And that's in the coming one that I want to show you before we start hitting uh, uh, an example now. So this is talk about the business intelligence objectives. Why do companies use business intelligence? The number one reason is better decision making. And this is showing to you that this is critical. Uh, this is very important and this is important. So about 99% of the respondents, they say that the better decision making, 99% of it is important or even critically important for decision making of the company. Uh, you have the second one, which is the cost saving, the growth in revenues, increased competitive advantage, enhanced customer service, compliance or risk management. So we are not talking about an, uh, uh, something light or something that's good to add to your companies. It's critical for the uh, well-being of your companies, particularly in this time of turbulent time that we are facing. You need to uh, uh, really show to your companies that you are value adding and the companies are getting uh, 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 timely data. So I don't want to wait until the end of the month for your cycle to show me the coming report. Uh, with this turbulence, you can imagine we need timely data. We need on-time data that when I click on refresh from my side, everyone using my decisions are going to uh, get it 100%. Okay, talk to us about the uh, story of the uh, uh, Power BI. So as we said to you, the Microsoft Power BI is on top of the uh, 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 cycle now here. Now, what is the story of the uh, Power BI? Now, imagine with me that you have the following uh, 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 situation. Let's say, uh, uh, so we are going to have the uh, discussion now started. So let's say, for example, that you have a kind of report that is uh, showing you the following. Let's say that we have the sales of the company and the sales of this company this year increased 10% compared to last year. We can say why. Uh, because of which region? Are uh, this region? Why? Which product? Are uh, this product? Why? Which salesman? Are uh, this salesman? Why? You can go all the way to the transaction level uh, in this case. So that's what we call the drill in and the, the, the drill up. What do you mean by the drill in and the drill up? So if you would like to drill in any piece of data, you can go all the way to the transaction level, as we said. Uh, that's one thing. Okay. Another thing, which is extremely important. Now, imagine that your report, as you are going to see a practical example now, has a number of what we call visuals, which is charts, what you call it visuals within the Power BI. So these visuals are showing different things. Let's say that there is a visual that's showing the sales by product another visual that's showing the sales by your regions, another visual that's showing financial statements, for example, another visual that shows the map of whatever you are talking about. Imagine that you click on a certain element in any visual. Let's say, for example, that you click on a certain product, product A, all right? So what is going to happen in the whole dashboard? Every single visual is going to show only product A. If you are going to click on a certain region, for example, if I'm going to click on a region, that's the Northern region. The whole dashboard will be talking about the sales of this Northern region. So you are going to see all of the other charts show, showing only this. This is called cross-filtering. And forget it to have something like this streamlined in Excel, for example. Excel cannot do cross-filtering between different visuals, for example. But this is a, 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 a another tool that's uh, available that we are going to see inside the Power BI. What else? Wherever your data is, wherever your data is, whether your data is in Excel, your data is in Oracle, in SAP, in Dynamics, in Teradata, wherever the data is, you can bring the data into Power BI. 
and there is no other uh, power, uh, I mean, business intelligence tool that's available in the market that's better than Power BI in terms of collecting the data from different uh, uh, areas as uh, uh, Power BI. Another thing, after, let's say, Mr. Ahmed created this report and he wants to share it with his manager, all right? So his manager can view this report in his laptop, in his iPad, in his cell phone from anywhere around the world. So your manager, for example, is sitting with a client in London or with a supplier in India or whatever, wherever they are, and he wants to get a certain piece of information about this particular client. I'm not going to wait for Ahmed to, I'm calling him, please send me everything in your cell phone, your iPad, in your laptop, just click it and you'll find everything there. So the ability for you as a manager to retrieve these uh, uh, pieces of information that you want about a certain particular element at the, at the point, at this point, is what you are going to get, for example, in your report. I always say that uh, uh, Power BI or business intelligence in general, just like you have a Google, imagine that in Google, you type something and you search, you will find it straight. Now, the contrary of having a Google like this is to have an encyclopedia called Google. Imagine that there is a book called Google. So all of the information is there, but go and find it now. I'm not going to be sitting in front of a customer or a supplier or an employee and going through a, 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 like all of these book called Google in order for me to find my piece of information. Instead, I want to search for it and I find it. That's called the business intelligence because it will lead to intelligent decisions for your uh, decision makers in, in your company. So whatever you are going to search for, whether a client, whether a supplier, whether a customer, whether a product, whether a region, whether a product line, whatever, competitors, everything will be streamlined and with a click you are going to find the piece of information that you are looking for. Exactly what you are looking for. Just like having Google versus a book called Google, for example. Okay? Another one. Another one. The Power BI desktop, as you are going to see it now, is completely for free. 100% for free. You can download it today. Actually, you have to. And you are going to see that today uh, uh, you will have the Power BI download your desktop for free, 100%. Just go to powerbi.com and you're going to find it there. However, the only catch here is whenever you are trying to share it with your management, like if you remember Ahmed, for example, would like to share with his manager Ali who is somewhere around the world. So he is going to click on the share, then he's going to share. He will publish it in something called the Power BI service. Then from there, he's going to share it. This is the only time we're going to charge you, which is $9.9 .9 per month, uh, um, which is a very manageable cost because not everyone in the company is going to be publishing and sharing. Not everyone in the company is going to be receiving. Both the sender and the receiver must be Power BI Pro in order for them to be able to share and to uh, receive at the, uh, at the same time. Okay. So that's, okay, you were talking, but we don't know what it is. Where does it fit in our life? Show us now an example of how this Power BI looks like, how we are going to start making use of it, and that's the main purpose behind this webinar. So if I'm going uh, uh, quick here, uh, this uh, webinar is going to be recorded, and you will have access to it. Mail is going to share with you the, uh, uh, the webinar link where you can have it and you can play it again and again. So I will be quick. I will not answer questions while I'm talking. By the end of my presentation, I'm going to take all your questions and I'm going to answer all of them. If the time does not permit, I'm going to have a video. If you have any other questions, I'm going to, uh, uh, to answer all of them. I will answer all the questions that will be posted, but please don't post questions now. Uh, don't put in the chats uh, now. So keep your focus 100%. Uh, the main purpose behind this is to kickstart you in, in terms of the Power BI. So you can appreciate, of course, the complexity. I talk about five days, full five days from 8.30 in the morning until 5.30 in the afternoon. Uh, talking for five days about Power BI and business intelligence and the DAX and the measures and the columns and cleansing the data and creating the reports and two big case studies. So imagine my task now that within two hours I have to finish all of this, including questions. So I will, of course, I'm not going to talk about all the details, of course, 100%, but you will have a very good flavor of how to kickstart this. And you will see me always saying, and this is something that you need to find out more about. This is something that I kickstarted. Please find more about. So I'll make sure that you understand uh, the, the, the global picture of the Power BI. You can hug the topic now. You understand where, where, where does it fit in your life. And a couple of details, of course, here and there. But the deep details, uh, of course, I cannot cover it here in this, uh, uh, in this case. And what we are doing now in this webinar uh, uh, is that our part 
from Luron to share with the community that we were uh, working with over the past number of years, especially during this time, uh, our knowledge so that they can kickstart as much as they can. In addition, of course, the, uh, uh, there is uh, a promotion for the course that we have a, for the uh, Power BI, but I promise you it's not entirely about the promotion of the course. So people who know me, people who have worked with me before in the past 10 years in the market, uh, in the GCC and about 20 years all over the world, they know that this is not our style that we are pushing for this sale of sales, uh, forgetting about the value add that we bring back to the community. All right. Uh, uh, so yes, there is an event that will happen full five days. Uh, it will be uh, next month in May, uh, uh, also through virtual learning, not uh, physical uh, uh, classroom because of the circumstances, of course. But it will be 100% the same style uh, uh, as you would see. Okay, so let's get started. Let's have the example and let's see how we are going to uh, proceed from here. So what I will do now is I uh, will share with you uh, an Excel spreadsheet and this Excel spreadsheet will have our data uh, that we are going to have for this example. So let's have a start with this example, please. And for those who attended my courses before, you, if you remember in the Power Pivot, this is the last part in the Power Pivot that we have uh, um, uh, added. So I would like to share this one with you now here, please. So if you can bear with me for a second to open this example for you. Here we go. So now you can see my Excel. And in Excel, I have this example. Let's have a look what this example is all about. So from here, please, entire focus. Uh, uh, it will be a one uh, um, sort of line of circles that is attached to each other. So your understanding is very important from now on. So take a, a, a sip from your cup of coffee and focus. Okay. We have a company and this company is selling a number of products, for example, uh, biscuits, chocolates, dry fruits, drinks, et cetera, et cetera. And we give every product a category, our product ID, I mean. So product one, product two, product three. Product one is tea time cookies. It's a type of biscuit selling for $20 and it's a small shape product. Okay. Information about our products. Product one, product two, product three, et cetera, et cetera. And as you can see in this example, we have a total number of 74 different products that we have inside this company. Okay, nice, carry on. So that's the information about our products, our database of our products, our table of data of our products. And we give this table a name here. As you can see, we call it products table. Okay, next one. Our stores in which we sell these products in. So these are our stores. We have 15 different stores. Store number one, that's in Arizona. State code is AZ, city is Phoenix. Zip code where it's located, does it have parking or no parking? Is there self-checkout, you know, self-checkout and you can go or cash accepted or only credit card? So as you can see in this range, we have uh, a discussion about our, uh, another range talk about our stores, which is very different from talking about our products. Products is talk about whether it's tea time cookies, it's biscuits, it's whatever. Is it small share product? What's the price? Stores is talking about whether we have parking or parking, self-checkout, customer uh, 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 can have cash or credit cards, etc. Et okay. As you can see, we cannot have these two ranges together. So you must agree with me that we are living in a world where we have different ranges and these ranges cannot come together. How will they come together? So you have products and you have stores and they cannot come together. All right. Awesome. Carry on. Then the third one is our customers. So... We are talking about another report, another, I mean, data source about our customers. Customer one, Mr. Abdul, that's the gender, male or female. Single, married or divorced, does it have kids or no kids? Uh, uh, age, education, zip code, and the nearest store to his location. That's another third range, talking about our customers. Full information about customers, whatever you are talking about now here. What's the name, what's the gender, what's the, da, 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 all the information about the customers. It's very different from the stores, very different from the products. We have now what? The customers. How many customers we have in this example? We have a total number of customers of 800 different customers, as you can see in this example. And again and again, we give this table a name called what customers. So we're talking about three tables now so far. Then we have the calendar. And you will see the importance of having the calendar in my discussion as you are going to see. So this calendar is just information about dates. That's all. So we don't have any products. It doesn't relate to any company, any certain industry, just information about dates. And you will see its importance in our discussion. So this is the date. Uh, which day number, which month number, which year number, and what's the week date, okay? That's the second date, third date, and so on and so forth. As you can see, it's not related to any company, just information about our dates. 
Why do we need this calendar? As you would see, we, we have something called time DAX functions. So anything related to time, you are going to need this DAX if you want to go back one year. I want to report to compare the sales of this year with last year. The sales of this year was five years ago. I want the year today. I want the quarter today, the month today. All of this will be streamlined. So all of the reports that you have been creating throughout your life, and you are going to do this one manually every single month, forget about it. It's going to be fully streamlined, fully automated. Once you create it, click on refresh to refresh the data, and off you go the report. Whoever has this report anywhere around the world is going to get the uh, finished product. Okay, so now we talked about four different uh, ranges. So we have the products, the stores, the customers, and the, uh, the dates table or the calendar table here. We can give it a name here. So I can call it here what a dates uh, table, for example, dates table, all right? So that also has a name. Okay, awesome. The last one is the transactions that took place. The, the, the transactions that took place, the actual, what we call the secondary table that's related to three other tables. Here. So on the first of January 2011, we saw product 20, in store number seven, by customer number 556, five, and he bought six pieces. As you can see, this table of the sales is connected to the three other uh, uh, tables, the, the, the four other tables, the products, the stores, the customers, and the sales. And what's the connection? Product ID with the product ID. So if you want any piece of information about product 20, you can straightforward in the dimensions here, for example, in the product number 20. As you can see, product 20 is donuts in a box. It's a type of cake selling for $7, and it's a small share product. It's sold in store number seven. What's the information about store number seven? If you go there, store number seven, it's in Massachusetts, it's in Boston, we have parking, no parking, sell it out, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's sold to customer number 556. Five, if you want to know any piece of information about it, you can find it whether what's his name, is he a male or a female, et cetera, et cetera. And how many pieces of uh, this product that he has bought or he has sold? Uh, uh, we have sold to him. Okay, so we have data here for two years. If you can see 2011 and 2012, over 108,000 lines. Very easy that you can go in millions and millions of rows of data in your what you call secondary table or the transactions table that connected to your own primary table. And in this case, product, product ID, store ID with the store ID, customer ID with the customer ID, and the date with the dates. So that's the connection that if you'd like to know anything about them, they are going to be connected as such. Very clear. So all what we said so far, let me uh, uh, um, have here the, uh, the share of the uh, whiteboard uh, just for me to uh, uh, just 100% uh, uh, confirm this discussion. So if I can tell you now, so we have here the sales, which is connected to, 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 to the products, the stores, the customers, and the dates. And the connection is product with the product ID, store ID with the store ID, customer with the customer ID, and the date with the dates. So in this case here, very important that you understand what you are talking about, that you have different ranges in your company and there are relationships between them and a lot of complexity about these relationships. And uh, uh, in my uh, course, uh, this exact part that I'm talking about is the one part that takes the most in the case studies of uh, the people that get involved in the, uh, in the actual course. So they, they end up with two case studies with their own company data. That's why we require three people from a company to come together in the course because they will own, uh, they will share their own company data and they will create their uh, report uh, to me, two cases uh, in front of my eyes. And the most of the time is spent on this part. So even though it seems very easy now, probably, probably, so ready, so ready, customer, customer ready, dates with the dates. But again, I'm, I, I need to hug the whole idea instead of me spending three, four hours just talking about these relationships, for example. We need to have a holistic view first. Okay, perfect. So we understand what's happening now, uh, which is the relationships. Now, What's an Excel? So our data is in Excel, wherever the data is. Uh, 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 you need to close Excel. You, uh, you cannot have Excel open in order for you to uh, retrieve it in your uh, Power BI. So I'm going now to the Power BI and I'm going to share with you the uh, screen of the Power BI. And let's have a look how the Power BI looks like. Voila, here is the Power BI. As you can see, Power BI, full focus, please, full focus. Power BI is not Excel. Power BI is not in the office at all. It's a separate product called, standalone product called Power BI, which is the business intelligence tool of Microsoft. So what we are talking about here, the, the steps that we need to have now is number one, to load the data to the Power BI, because where is the data now? The data is in Excel, or Oracle, or SAP, or Dynamics, or Teradata, wherever the data is, and you can combine data from different sources. So some of the data can come from Excel, 
Some of them can come from the cloud. Some of them can come from Oracle, SAP, Dynamics. Wherever the data is, you can bring them all into the Power BI as I'm going to show you now here. And then once the data is loaded, you need to create the relationships, the one that I just talked about down here. For the product, store ID, store ID, customer ID, customer ID, and the rate with the rates. Then the magic now will start, okay, after, after uh, 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 these two steps. So let's have a look, how is this going to proceed from here? Have a look to be, uh, with me, please, guys. First step for us is to get the rate. Get the rate, and you'll be surprised, thoroughly surprised how massive this gets data from. If I uh, click on the get data, Check how big the, uh, the variety of the sources that you can get the data from now. You can get the data from Excel, from CSV file, from PDF, from SQL, from Access, IBM, uh, 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 SQL, SAP, Azure, Impala, wherever the data source is, you can bring it from LinkedIn, from even there is Facebook even that you can bring the data from like your social networking uh, uh, for your company, for example, they would like to see the relationship between their sales and the posts that they have in their social media, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so as I said, there is no single product in the market in terms of business intelligence that is that thorough in terms of collecting the data from different sources. We remember our data is in Excel. So let me, as I told you, Excel should be closed at the time that I retrieve the data. So Excel and I click on connect. All what I said, you have the tables, we understood them, the sales, product stores, customers, dates, connections between them that we understand. And this will be done automatically, as you will see in, in terms of the Power BI. Product, product, is, store ID, store ID, customer is the customer ID, and the rates with the dates. We started with the Power BI, we said get data from Excel. Carry on with me, please, guys. So uh, my data is in desktop. Here is the example data, and I click here and open. So it will smartly uh, go and connect itself to Excel, and it will find out the ranges and the sheets. We need the, the ranges, the customers, the dates table, the fact sales, the products, and the stores. So I'm going to select all of them. I need all of them. I need all of these tables. And I'm going to, I don't need these. These are just the sheets, calendar, dimension, and fact sales. And I'm going to click on load, load. So very straightforward. I'm connecting myself to Excel or wherever the source is, it will be that, that straightforward. You are going to bring them and load them into the Power BI. So Power BI now is understanding how these uh, tables are uh, structured and related with each other. So they will think about that. I see here product uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then I sold here product 17, product two, product 18, product 29, stores and customers and the sales. Uh, so it will link with all of them automatically, except the rate as you are going to see now with me. So check on the right-hand side. Once we finish the loading section, so you have here the customers, the dates, the fact sales, the products and the stores. We have loaded. As I told you, some of them can come from Excel. That's it. Then let's bring others from Access. Let's bring others from Oracle. Let's bring others from the, wherever the data is, you can bring it, as we said. And you can have from different sources at the same time. Okay. So this is the, uh, uh, the table set here. If I go here at the bottom, there is something called the model. If I click on it, you will see that the tables have been related automatically to each other, except for the dates, as you'll see. If I click on the model here, and let me just uh, squeeze this a little bit. Let's see what will happen here. It will automatically realize that the fact sales is related to the products through the product ID, product ID, and with the store, store ID with the store ID, and this one with the customer ID with the customer ID. It will not uh, connect the, the dates for many reasons, because you can have many dates, the purchase date, the invoice date, da, 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 so it doesn't want to click with any dates uh, as such. But the product ID is unique uh, uh, in terms of the sales, for example. So how we can link it, because it's very crucial for the dates to be connected to your secondary table, so I would simply drag the dates from this side to this side or this side to this side. So I can uh, uh, make sure now if I uh, click on this one, oh, I made a mistake here. So let me delete this. Uh, 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 and I will uh, push it one more time to have the dates with the dates. Make sure that you stop on top of the dates itself. So that's going to link the date with the date. Uh, come. All right, so it's now correct 100%. So now the model is uh, 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 framed properly. We call it normalized model now in terms of the secondary model, uh, the secondary table connected to all of your primary table. As I told you, this step that you, that you feel now that's very easy, very straightforward, is the step that takes the longest in terms of the case study. Sometimes it takes hours. And in practice, in, in, whenever we go in a, in, in a modeling exercise, because we have a sister company to Euron called Radix BI that is going to be streamlined only for the modeling for companies, so we go there and we model for the Power BI in addition to many other services 
from the uh, 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 data uh, digital, uh, digitalization of the whole data stream all the way to the uh, Power BI and the artificial intelligence as well. Uh, uh, and uh, Mele is going to talk to you and send you more about this one later. Okay, so that step is, is really very uh, uh, complicated in real life. Okay, carry on with me please guys. The data itself that we have there now. And let me jump to the data. On the left-hand side here, you see me? So I'm talking about the data itself. So here are the tables that we have. If you remember, if I click on the customers, here is all the information of the customers are going to come here. Whoa, 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 here it is. And the dates table, here is the dates table, the fact sales, here is all the fact sales, the products, and then the stores. Okay, seems fine so far. Carry on with me, please, guys. Now, I'm going to jump to a very, very crucial topic in terms of the business intelligence called DAX functions. Open eyes wide, please. So Microsoft created some functions that they, they don't exist in Excel. They do exist in their business intelligence, Power BI, and also in the Power Pivot called DAX functions. And understanding these DAX functions is really the fine line of somebody who is just superficially uh, scratching the surface or he's using it very, very professionally. So, and you believe me that there is a book called DAX functions, for example. And during my course, I talk about 65 DAX functions, different DAX functions, uh, understanding them, how they are going to interact with your model, how they are going to automate a lot of DAX uh, models. And even after I finish that full 65, that's not covering all of them. And I invite my uh, attendees to go and understand all of these DAX functions on their own. Okay, so let me just explain to you the idea uh, of DAX functions with the first example. You will get the idea, just focus please. For example, here in the sales, we have the quantity. I don't want to talk about the quantity. I want to talk about the sales. So in order, for us to, in order for us to have the sales, we need to multiply the quantity times the price. Where is the price hiding? The price is hiding in the products. So what are you gonna do in English? In English, talk to me. I want to get the related price from the products to be multiplied times the quantity. And I want to create a column here for the sales of these different transactions. One more time. In English. Go and fetch for me the related price from the products range, because we all remember that in the products, we have the price here hiding. So you want to get the related price. What do you mean by the related? What is the relationship between me and the products is the product ID. So what will happen there in Excel, in Power BI mine, it will go here, for example, in the uh, fact sales. The first one is product 23, for example. So go and fetch for me the related price of product 23 from the products range to be multiplied times the quantity. How are we going to do this here in this case? Listen to me straightforward. They created a DAX for you called what? Called related, which acts just like the VLOOKUP in Excel, for example. Go and get me the related price of this product. So it will find out where is this product 23, then I'll get you the price to be multiplied times the quantity. Let's have a look. So if I go to home here and I want to create a new column, new column in Power BI, new column. So a new column will be created. What do you want to call it? I want to call it sales which will be the, the related price times the quantity equals to, check with me please guys. I'm going to write here related. There is no function in Excel called related. We don't have an Excel a function called related. It's a unique DAX function that does not exist in Excel. So the related what? Products, what? Do you want the related products category? Products name, product ID, product size? No, I need the product price. So you can double click or press tab or press enter here, okay? So here is the related products price. Please close the bracket. Please close the bracket. And you can see that it highlights the brackets because that's a very common mistake that people don't close the brackets once they open. It. So you don't want to get the related price only. You want to get the related price, then multiply times the quantity. So I'm going to say times fact sales, what fact sales quantity. And this is not a DAX function. This is just a column called quantity. As you can see, all columns in Power BI are between square brackets. And all DAX functions, they have what the, uh, uh, the brackets, not the square brackets. Okay, once I click here on enter, check what will happen. It will go and fetch the related price to be multiplied times the quantity. So what's that column? Sales. So it takes whatever quantity that we have. So we have two products, uh, two units of this product sold. So you, it will go to this price, multiply times two, it will get to the price here, as you can see of the sales, for example. Okay, so that's a new column called sales. So we started to understand that there is a logic for these DAX functions and many of them are extremely useful. I will, I will touch about uh, uh, three or four of them now just for you to get the idea of how useful in streamlining your reports. Okay, carry on with me, please. So 
One more thing I need to do here, I need to clean them. I don't want to see these decimals, and I want to put the one thousand separator here uh, for this uh, column. So you can go here and you can put the one thousand separator for the sales, and I don't want to see these decimals, for example. That's what the uh, uh, sales for us, okay? So the first use of the DAX is in columns, 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 columns. So you can do this column times this column minus this column, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And we use the DAX function related. Now, another step, exceptionally important. Something called measures, measures, measures. And these measures are the brainstorm of, uh, uh, the, the, the brain head of the uh, 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 Power BI. What do you mean by these measures? Aggregates of columns or other measures. Is, what do you mean by aggregates? Let's say, for example, I want to have a sum of all of the seeds. Sum of this column of the seeds. Then I can use the sum within our filtering context, for example. So you can say, hey, I want the sum of the seeds for the products. So it will be summing it for products. Sum for the region. So it will sum it, but for the region. It will sum it for whether you are married or single or divorced. It will sum it whether you have kids or no kids. Whatever the filtering context. So you create the measure. You have the measure, which is going to sum this column. Where are you going to use it? Up to you in your filtering context now. So I want to sum based on the regions. I want to sum based on the products. I want to sum based on. So that's what you're going to do in your filtering context. So let's have a look. How are you going to create our first measure here? Here we go. If I go to home again. As you can see, you can have new column or you can have a new measure. Measure, measure, very critical, very crucial in your life in Power BI. Very, very, very critical, these measures. It's the brain of the whole Power BI, as you will see. And that's why when I start this course, I don't start with Power BI, I start with Power Pivot, because it's way easier for you to understand the measures and the DAX in Power Pivot first. And then when you jump to the Power BI, you talk about the extra features that you have there. Then your life in Power BI is going to be so easy. But of course, I don't have the luxury of time here, but you will still get the idea of what's happening. If I click on new measure, so that's not going to be a column like the sales that we have now. There, there is a column called sales that we have added in the, in the pack sales table. It's going to be what a measure that you are going to have. What do you want to call this measure? Let me call it sum of rev. Sum of rev, for example, or sum of sales, whatever. Equals to sum of the fact sales, what sales. Because we created a column called fact sales. So when, once you just write for FCT fact sales, then you want to sum what? Date, product ID. Quantity, sales, I want to sum the sales, please. And you close the bracket and you press M. So that's a measure. Simply, I go to home and I created what? A new measure. And this new measure is appearing here under the fact sales. And it's called what? Sum of rev. As you can see, it doesn't show this one as a column. There is no column for the sum of rev. This is just a measure, not a column. You don't want to do this one like the sales, for example, line by line. You want to sum the whole column. Average the whole column, maximum the whole column, et cetera, et cetera. So that's measure for us. And as you can see here, we used a function called sum, which is existing in Excel and Power BI. So some of the functions, some of the DAX functions are the same between Excel and Power BI, and some of them are unique, for example. Let's have another measure. Let's have another measure. One of the things that your manager will always ask you, they will always ask you, okay, guys, I need you to tell me how much is the uh, uh, same sales of this period compared to the previous period? Okay, focus please, this is a little bit tricky. I'm going fast, I know, but I need to cover uh, as much as possible, then you can uh, play this video again and again. So please keep your focus. So I have done now the measure. I have finished now the measure. Okay, the measure is done. And I would like to create another measure that will get me the previous year and up to your filtering context. So you want to see for all the products, the sum of the sales for this year compared to the previous year or the sum of all of the regions this year compared to the previous year. So you understand that you will create something for previous year. How you are going to use it up to you, up to you in your own filtering context as you will see in the final report. So let's create a, a, another measure, new measure. So check what you are going to be doing now. Focus please, this is a little bit tricky. We have a DAX function. Let me uh, open with you, uh, share with you the, uh, the whiteboard again, okay? Focus, please. So this one is going to be talking about what here now? The, uh, the other measure now, which is the, uh, uh, we are going to need a DAX now called what? Called date ad, called date ad. Okay, so what is the story of the date ad? Uh, where is that go? Yeah, uh, date 
add one word. This is a DAX, which simply will get you any measure for the previous or forward number of periods. So for example, okay, you can say that add equals to. Check how, how the date, uh, date add will look like. So you are going to have something. I'm going to explain to you what, what we are going to be talking about. Date add, right? You don't need this one now. Date add, you are going to give me the dates column, comma, minus one year. Let's read it together before we are going to use it. So what are you basically saying here? You are basing, uh, basically saying here, as we are going to use it now later, for whatever measure, like sum of rev, like what we have done now, sum of rev. Give me the sum of rev, but for the previous year. So what do you want to do now? Date add, go to the column of the dates. Remember the calendar tables that we have. We have a column called dates. And I told you, wake up, that this column of the dates will be needed if you have any time that to move backward or forward in time. So if you, if you manager would like to compare this year with the previous year, so you're going to say minus one year. This year with five years ago. So you are not going to do this one manually anymore. It's going to be fully automated. So it will compare this year with the previous year, this year with five years ago. You'll have two measures now, for example. So any DAX function that is related to time, like this one, we call it time DAX function, year to date, quarter to date, last year, year on year, you will not do it manually anymore. It will be streamlined as you will see now. So date add, you are going to say the date column in order for me to be able to move backward or forward in time, minus one year. No, 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 I need five years, minus five years. No, 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 no. I need it month for month. So minus one month. You understand me, guys? Huh? As you are going to see it with me now, it's going to be uh, coming very clear as you will see. Okay. Another one as uh, uh, you are going uh, to need it here in this exam. So the first one that you need now is something called what? Date add. Date add. Very, very, very crucial DAX function and very useful DAX function as you will see. It. Another DAX function that you are going to need now. Let me just erase this a little bit. Uh, another DAX function that you are going to need uh, is uh, called calculate. Calculate. Calculate is an exceptionally, exceptionally important DAX function. And what's the story of the calculate? Then we are going to put everything together. Please, please, please focus. All right. What is calculate? If you want to override the filtering context by any criteria that you want, what do you mean by overriding the filtering context? Let's say, for example, I want the sum of the revenue for the sales that had a discount more than 5%. So sum this whole column of the sales only for the transactions that had a discount more than 5%. So that you are going to override the filtering context. Another one. I need the sum of the revenue for all the products that were returned back again to us. So you are overriding the filtering context. Another one. I want to have all of the revenue that were made by, by the salespeople that left the company already. So that's going to override the filtering content. So you can imagine all of these ad hoc requests that you used to do manually before will be super, super nicely done by the uh, calculate function, which will override the filtering context by any criteria that you have. Okay? So let me put it all together. Do you remember what we need to do, guys? Now it will come clear together, guys, here. Okay? Remember what we need to do. I need to get some of rev uh, previous year. So get me the same sum of rev, but my overriding condition is to go back one year. So we will create another measure. I'm going to call it sum of rev previous year equals to. Help me, please. Calculate. Calculate what? The sum of rev. Calculate the sum of rev. So I need the same sum of rev. But what is your overriding condition? Go back one year. So comma, date, add, oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. The dates column from the dates table, comma, minus one year. Close the bracket of the date add, close the bracket of the calculate. Again, again, welcome. You are basically saying the same sum of red measure that we created, which will sum this column for us. I have an overriding condition here. Go backward one year. So it will get you the same sum of red, but back one year, for example. All right. So once I say, uh, uh, override. What comes to your mind? Calculate. So you're saying calculate. The same sum of it. Exactly the same sum of this column. But what's your overriding condition? Go backward one year. So it's going to go backward one year. I know it's overwhelming if you feel overwhelmed because you are not doing it with me now, etc. So it, it, it can be overwhelming now for you to understand all of this. But I swear God, it's not, it's not chemistry. This is not chemistry. So once you do it with your own hands, and you go back through the video again and again, you will understand. But very crucial at this stage just to have an idea what are these DAX functions doing and how you can uh, make use of them 
uh, as you are going to see in the reporting now immediately uh, together. Okay, so don't panic. Don't feel that this is chemistry we are talking about. Okay, awesome. So now uh, let's go back to our power BI. Let's go back to our power BI. So let's create now a new measure, as we said. So we have now a new measure, all right? So what is the new measure now? Uh, you are going to be creating for me, and this is in the back sales, yes? Uh, uh, new measure. Okay, what do you wanna call it now? Sum of rev, rev year equal to, huh? calculate, cal calculate, calculate what? The sum of rev. Once I write sum, it will give you as one of the options sum of rev that we have. So calculate the sum of rev. But what is your overriding condition? You want to override this condition by what? By going back with one year. So you are going to say date add, date add, uh, the date column from uh, the dates table, as I told you, any time that function, you see? You see date add, I need the dates column. From where? From where? From the dates column of the, uh, the from the dates table. Because these dates table, dates column, have two characteristics. They are not repetitive, they are unique, first of October, second of October, and so on, and there is no gaps. In your secondary table, your sales can be repeated because you can have many transactions in the same date, and many dates will have no transactions at all, weekends, for example. But the dates column in the dates table is consecutive, is unique, all right? So that's what we need here, this dates, comma, minus one. What do you mean by minus one? Go back. Go back what? One year. Close the bracket of the date add, close the bracket of the calculate press here then. So as you can see, you see nothing, but you created the measure. How you are going to use it in your report now, as you are going to see. You got the idea. Let's carry on. And then, I'm not going to carry on in the DAX. You have a DAX that will get to, for example, year to date, quarter to date, month to date. What do you mean by this? You often get asked this question. How much is our sales? Year to date, quarter to date, month to date. Okay, give me this year to date, but last year. How much is the year on year percent growth? All of this can be done. All of your KPI, all of your KPIs can be created as measures. Then I want to see this KPI, let me see, by branches, by employees, by product, by regions, by periods, by month. Where you are going to see it, it's up to you in your filter context. But you create the brain. We have a brain called the measure now. That will get you the sum of rep, sum of rep previous year, year to date, quarter to date, month to date, you name it. All right? Super. Let's see now the claim on top, which is the report that you are going to be creating. As you can see, this we call it a canvas, which is, it's not a spreadsheet, it's not Excel, we don't have column A, B, C, X, A, A, row one, two, three, it's a canvas. It's just like uh, 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 you are a painter and you're going to draw your report now. And on the right-hand side, you see something called the visuals. And what do you mean by these visuals? These are the charts, whatever you wanna call it now. Okay, we call it visuals or visualization. And even though they are super powerful, these visuals, but there are a lot, a lot of visuals that you can import from the uh, App Store and 99.9% .9 of them are for free. So you can import into this uh, report a lot of these visuals. I will uh, 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 show you an example of how to import these visuals now. So let's start with a simple example now to understand. Let me get a column chart. Once you click on it, just give it one click. Boom, you get a column chart done in your uh, Power BI. You can see how big you want it, how wide, how narrow, etc., etc. And let's see what are the axes that you would like to use inside of this uh, visual. Let's have a look. Let's say, for example, we'd like to get the following. I want to see the customers who are single married divorce, so I can get here the uh, uh, marital status. I'm going to put it here as an axis. What else you want to see? I want to see the kids, having kids or no kids below it, as you'll see on the center why. And let's say parking, you can search here on top, parking, you can put it below it, okay? So we built here a hierarchy. Just give me 30 seconds, you'll understand why I did it like this. What's the values that you'd like to put here? Let me put here the sales. If I put here the sales in the value, so here is the sales done for the married, single, and divorce uh, 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 for them. Okay. Now, you can ask me this question now. Why you didn't put the sum of rev, for example, sum of sales? Listen carefully. The sales here, you can change it here to be the sum, count, average, maximum, minimum, et cetera, et cetera. You, you will ask a question. So why the hell you created the measures now? Because you can do it here. You can make it the sum of the revenue, the average of the revenue, et cetera. Yes. But what are the measures you can do here? Sum, count, average, maximum. Done. Done. Give me now year to date. Show me now how to get year to date. How can I get quarter to date? How can I get previous year? Year on year. All of these are measures that you have to create with your own hand. All right? Which is the explicit measures. These are called implicit measures. All right? Carry on with me, please, guys. So I, I have here the sum. 
if I brought here, like if I, if I make this one instead of this one, I make it count. So this one is going to be what? The count of the transactions, not the sales of the transactions. The most popular, of course, is use the sum. But if I brought the sum of rev here, it would only be the sum. So let me do it for you, if you want. If I bring the sum of rev, it cannot show here, uh, do it, sum of rev, it, uh, bring the sum of rev, it can only show you what? The sum of rev, because the sum of the rev cannot be anything else, cannot be count, cannot be average, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So if I bring here the sales, here in this case, okay. I will talk about a little bit of daily stuff that you can do, some makeup stuff that you can do in your uh, visuals here. You can go to the next section here, which is called what format. Click on this one. Uh, you can have the general, you want X position, Y position, this is the X, this is the Y position, da, da, da. Uh, X axis. Uh, uh, you can open it up. What do you want to color? You want this color? Uh, no, 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 no. I want this color, please. Uh, this font, I, I cannot see. Okay, let me increase the font a little bit. So a lot of gaily stuff that you can do here. And I'm inviting you to go and find out what are these. I'm not going to lose time there. Okay, brilliant. Carry on. So we had the first uh, 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 visual done. Now, why did you put here the axis, three axis, marital status, kids, and parking? Because we can see only here the marriage, single, and divorce. This is what we call the hierarchy. Remember when I started by saying, you see the sales, for example, if, then you can drill in. So I would like to see, uh, see uh, uh, which product, uh, this, or which region, or which, how can you drill in here in this case? Here we go. So if I put that drill in mode on, drill uh, 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 in mode on, so I put here the drill on. Give the married just one click. If you see the married, how much the total sales? 2.4 million. Just give it one click. It will tell you married, having kids, no kids, because that's the second hierarchy. I want to know the people who are married having kids. Do they prefer to go to the stores having parking or no parking? Let me click on it again. So that tells you married having kids go to parking, married having kids going to no parking, for example. If you want to drill up, you can drill up again. All right? And there are a couple of other ways that you can drill in. I will leave it for you, for, uh, for you to find out. Excellent. This is the first visual. Show us the second visual, please. Let's say, uh, once you have a second visual, you have to click on the canvas outside, please. Because if you are inside and you click, for example, on a pie chart, it will convert it into a pie chart. So you have to be outside in the canvas and then click on the pie chart, for example, okay? Another visual. Place it wherever you want. What do you want to see? Let's say I would like to see the education uh, uh, as uh, my legend. And what are the values that you want to see? Let's say that I would like to see the sales. So I will bring the sales here, for example, as value here, okay? So what do you see here now? High school, undergrad, grad, and in the daily stuff that you can do here, you can see now, uh, I want to show what uh, the values, percentage of the total, put me the name, uh, put the size up, put background of the logo of the company, uh, change the color theme, uh, da, 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 all of this in the daily format. Okay, now, another very important thing that we'd like to have. Can we have drill in here? Of course, of course. Like if we have, let's say, self-checkout. Uh, uh, if I have a hierarchy here again, so immediately the hierarchy is going to show up. So if you'd like to drill in here, and I would like to click on high school, I would like to know people who are high school, do they go to the self-checkout, yes or no? Give it one click, it will tell you uh, yes or no. So it looks like they prefer the self-checkout, the people who are high school or third, something like that, all right? This is called what, guys? The drill in and drill out. Forget it to have something streamlined like this in Excel, for example. The second very important feature that, uh, that's immensely crucial here is what we call the cross-filtering between the different visuals. If I, I told you, I told you, if you put the drill in uh, mood on and you click on the merit, for example, it's going to drill in or drill up, okay? But what if the drill in mood is off? And you click on the merit, check what will happen in the whole uh, report now. If I click on the merit, check, 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 check. Oh, oh, what happened now? Cross filtering happened. So that's the sales of the merit in the high school, the sales of the merit in the grad, the sales of the merit in the undergrad. You have no idea how crucial this cross-filtering in your reports once you start adding more visuals, as you will see. Uh, or you want to do the other way around. If I click on high school, oh. So that's the married high school, single high school, divorce high school, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So if you have the drill in mode on, it will drill in. If you have the drill in mode off and you click, it will do the cross-filtering. Very clear, very sweet, very sweet, very sweet. Of course, of course. Uh, uh, you can show in whatever filtering context now, by product, by stores, by use, by da 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 da. Okay, another visual, for example. Let me just add a couple of visuals that we understand the story now. Let me put a map. If I put a map here, map, 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 click on the map. Uh, it's working with Bing Map, just like uh, Google Maps, for example. It needs anything related to anything that Google Maps can find out, which is back the same Bing Map. Uh, uh, like what? Like 
uh, countries, states, cities, etc. So if you remember in our example here, we have the city uh, names. So if you remember the city name, how it looks like, let me show you in the data here. So if I go to the stores, this is how the city looks like. Phoenix, uh, uh, Sacramento, Albany, Olympia, Madison, etc. So how, are we, how is the city going to be? Uh, let me click the city here in the location and just wait. One, two, three. The internet must be on now. Boom, is that it? It will show you where is this in the whole uh, 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 map around the world and just from the names of the cities. Or if you have the coordinates, for example, the latitude and the longitude. Now, if you want to have the size also different based on the sales, let me bring the sales here, for example, as the size here. So I will bring the sales here as a size. So check how it looks like now. Oh, oh, oh. So what's happened now? It will show you the sales of the different uh, cities based on the sales of these cities. The cross filtering is been working. If I click on the marriage, if I click on the single, if I click on the divorce, it will show you where is the concentration of the divorce versus single versus marriage. Again, the cross filtering that I told you, extremely crucial in your report. Or show me the high school, the undergrad, the grad, et cetera, et cetera. So the cross filtering is also working. So with these just three uh, uh, of them, do you know how many questions we have answered now? And with every single visual that you can add, once you click on it, then it will give you a very different answer. Again, I am not going to have hundreds of my PowerPoint presentations every single month. Uh, uh, you just need to have this Power BI model created and whatever your manager is going, he is looking for the uh, uh, undergrad. So once you click on, then the whole report talk about undergrad, for example, or married or single divorce, which will lead to smart, uh, intelligent decisions. That's why we call it business intelligence because of the smart decisions that you will come up with. Okay, let me quickly add a couple of visuals, for example. Okay, the more visuals that I add, the more you will feel how crucial it will be uh, in your reporting going forward. And uh, once you create the report and you publish and it shares it with your management, you don't need to do anything in the future, you just need to refresh and everything in your cell phones, in your laptops, in your iPads, wherever your management uh, is. Okay, another one, another one. Let me add a slicer, for example, a slicer. A slicer for what? For the years. So if I add a slicer for the years, for example, I put it here as a field. And there are different ways for you, daily ways for you to show the slicer for the years here now. So if you put it as a list, uh, if you don't, if you, the one that I prefer is to go to general in the girly orientation horizontal. I like this one. It looks much better. If you squeeze, check what happened. Check, check, check. Oh, looks very nice. Okay. So 2011, 2012. So this is for all of the years that we have. Click on 2011. Click on 2012. Throughout the whole model is going to be showing you the cross filtering again and again. It will be done automatically. That's embedded part of the model. Let's have another one for the month, another slicer for the month. Let's click on the slicer. Let's bring the month. Talk to me. And once I have the month, put it here as a field. Click here, put it here as a list, right? And come to the girly, come to the general and orientation horizontal. Uh, you can squeeze it in or whatever that you want. Uh, and then you are going to have it. So I want 2011 uh, 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 May, please. Oh, what about October? What about uh, September? Uh, show me 2012, please. Uh, show me April. Are you following me, guys? So the more you are going to see, the better the outcome that you are going to have. Another one quickly. All right. I know that I went over my time one hour past. So just give me 10 minutes to get to get you a couple of visuals quickly. Then I'm going to open the uh, uh, the window for uh, questions and answers. Okay. Uh, you, in your report, you can add multiple pages here, for example. So if I add another visual, let's say, for example, I want to compare the sales of this year compared to the previous year, all right? So how are you going to do something like this? Let me add another visual. Let's say, for example, area chart, area chart. Now, they, that the power of the measures will start appearing here. So I want to show here the following. I want to see, uh, let me add another slicer for the years here, for example. So I would like to add a slicer for the years. Then I'm going to show you how is this going to be working. So I go to the list, come to the visual, the general orientation, horizontal, and this is 2011 and 2012, for example. Okay, awesome. Now, uh, what do you want to see again? Click on it uh, because we didn't put anything in the axis here. What do you want to put here? I want to put here the axis to be our month, for example. So I want to have our monthly sales in the axis, and I want the values to be the two, uh, two things. I need to have the sum of rep, for example, and sum of rep previous year in the values, put sum of rep, 
And please put some of it previously. If you remember, I created another measure. Let me just uh, open this a little bit. A sum of it previously. If you put it here as a value as well. Oh, check this one. Check how beautiful it is and how beautiful it will be when I put it in the cross filtering. What is that showing us now? This is the sum of rev this year, all right, which is 2012 that I'm selecting. And this is the previous year. So I can immediately tell, ah, guys, what happened in this quarter? Ah, oh, last year it was way better than, ah, oh, this one, da, da, da. This is without any filter, other filtering context. Check what I put it now in the first page now. Of course, if I put 2011, you get nothing here. Why you get nothing? Because uh, uh, there is no previous year for 2011, all right? So this is all the work that you used to do manually to get this year and the previous year for this, for that, for that, and you have a lot of sheep in your Excel spreadsheet. but absolutely terrible, terrible, all right? This is streamlined now. If I get this uh, visual here and I put it in the page one, so if I come here to page one, for example, and I am going to, uh, let me squeeze these, and I'm going to put them here so that you can uh, see how nicely it will look like. So I will bring the years here on top, bring the month here, da, 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 and then let me bring here this other dude. If I bring this dude here, control X, cut, and then control and V. Same shortcuts that you have in Excel, you can have in here again. Okay, so what does it say, uh, say now? 2012 compared to the previous year. But I don't want all of the 2012. I need for the marriage this year compared to the previous year. A single compared to this year, the previous year. A divorce, da, da, da. You see how beautiful it is. I, I need the, the, the uh, high school. Ah, the marriage, da, 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 da. So I want you to understand that every single click I'm going to click here is a, a snapshot in your uh, PowerPoint uh, uh, presentation. I call it death by PowerPoint. I hate PowerPoint. People who know me, they know exactly how much I hate PowerPoint. I call it death. If I sit in a meeting and all what I'm seeing is just PowerPoint of what happened last month, so I will be eating the sushi leave, I will never use it afterwards. How will I use it? And I swear that without mentioning names. There was a company uh, that we are offering our service to in, in Saudi Arabia. Their top management received from the finance department 1,100 slides in their PowerPoint presentation every single month. How the hell are you going to run a company with 1,100 slides every single month you receive from the finance department only? And if I want to go back 10 months, that's 11,000 slides. How? How? Because there is no cross filtering, because all of these other features are not there. And just for me to prove it to you, uh, I want uh, uh, April, please. Uh, show me April. So it will be April this year compared to the previous year, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Or show me all the previous month, etc. Et or uh, for the high school, or for the undergrad, or for the marriage. Oh, no, no, no. Each and every click here is one PowerPoint slide. Now, Sam, why you have a lot of them, for example, in our case? Let me share with you the last one. Promise the last one. Okay, don't hate me, please. I know I gave you a lot, but you'll understand why it's important. So that's the last uh, uh, power uh, 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 visual that I will show you. And then one uh, tip and uh, we will take the question. Here we go. One visual that your management loves a lot uh, uh, is uh, called the, uh, uh, the uh, water chart, water flow chart. What do you mean by the water flow chart? Imagine, imagine with me that you have the following situation. Okay, let me just show it to you in a, uh, in a screen again in the whiteboard. Okay, so if I am showing you, uh, what do I mean by this one? The the, the uh, waterfall chart, extremely immensely important. So. Uh, once your company sees a, uh, a waterfall chart, they get addicted to it. They really want to see a lot in the power uh, 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 of this one. So let's say this is 2011 and this is 2012. This is 2011 and this is 2012. And there is an increase in the sales here, as you can see. The biggest answer coming from the power, uh, uh, from the uh, waterfall chart is why there is an increase, why there is a decrease. This area there of an increase or decrease. Why do we have this increase? Why do we have this decrease? This is the answer of the uh, water flow chart. So let me show you how is this. So I want to see, is this mainly because of the marriage or the single or the divorce? Is it because of the parking uh, 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 stores or the no parking? Is it because of this state or this state or this state? Whatever you name it, okay? And it will be subject to the filtering context and again. So uh, marriage, single, divorce, da, 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 you know, all the filtering context will be working there. That's exactly the idea of the water flow chart. So let me uh, uh, come back again to the uh, Power BI and start showing you the power, the, uh, this uh, last one, okay? So I will come here to the uh, waterfall chart, okay? Here is the waterfall chart. So if I bring here, uh, for example, all the years, bring the years, please. 
I put it here as a category. And I bring for me all of the sales. So I bring the sales here as my Y axis. All right. Now, as you can see, I don't like the, I, I don't see the 2011, 2012. Okay, okay. I told you don't ask this question. Go quickly to the axis and you can increase the point. Okay. Now, uh, if you can see here, it shows 2012 and 2011. No, no, no. I want to sort them properly. Click on these three and then you can sort. Sort by what? By year, not by sales. So it will be 2011 first, then 2012. Then you want to say what? Ascending. So 2011, then 2012. So it's all by years, ascending. Okay. Now, how do you want to break it down? If I want to break it down, for example, by the marital status. Let's say, for example, I bring the marital status as a breakdown. Oh, explain this to me, please. It's, you can explain it to me straightforward. What does it mean? Between 2011 and 2012, most of the increase happened because of the single, less because of the marriage, less because of the divorce. Ah, who was responsible because of the sales of the single? You guys are going to have great bonus. Who was responsible for the divorce? Are you guys are going to be fired, for example? Okay, so it will just get you the attribution analysis uh, of why there is an increase or decrease in the sales, for example, which we use it a lot in investment, for example. Any company uh, in investment, they need this a lot. This increase happened because of which industry, which portfolio manager, which, uh, uh, for example, uh, country, which uh, exchange, da, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so it will do the, the attribution just like that with all the uh, automation that we have. No, 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 no. I don't want to talk about the marital status. I want to talk about parking versus no parking. So get me the parking versus no parking, for example. Check it. Oh, so most of it happened because of the no parking, less because of the yes uh, for parking. No, 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 no. I want to see because of which state. If I bring the state here and I put it as a breakdown, so what does it tell you now here? Read it for me. Read it. It says to you, most of the increase from 2011 to 2012 happened because of Colorado. Less Ohio, less Pennsylvania, less Wisconsin, less New Jersey. So this is the increase. Remember, we have 15 states, which is the 15 source that we have. All of the rest other than these five are combined in this other. I want to break it down. Go to the girly. And then you will see a unique girly one here called what? Breakdown. If you open it up, and you go to the maximum, which is 15, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, oh, very beautiful. Explain this to us, please. From 2011 to 2012, most of the increase happened because of Colorado, Ohio, Pennsylvania, da 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 da, da. Much less is happening now because of California. Da, da. Actually, there is a decrease. If we didn't have this decrease, what does it mean? Our sales would have reached that level here. But it dropped because of these four states. Who was responsible because of these four states? You are fired. Right? Something like that. Uh, or, no, 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 I need less breakdown, for example, then it will have less breakdown and it combine all the rest in the other here. Okay? And so on and so forth. So that's, again, another uh, feature that you uh, can have. And one more time, you can put this one in your what? In your filtering context. Again and again, uh, it will be working absolutely perfect. Uh, so if I uh, squeeze this one in the control uh, X, and then I put here control and V, cut and paste. So all of this uh, 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 that we have, but I want for January, please. No, 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 for April. No, 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 for, for September. You see what's happening? Uh, 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 no, I, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about uh, uh, 2011, 2012, all of these states, married. Sing, divorce. No, 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 show me the high school only, please. You understand how beautiful and interactive and informative your report's going to be to your management. Absolutely brilliant way. All right, so to recap, what happened here is that we had the raw data. I'm not going to invent new data for you. You are just need to tabulate it very properly in order for it to be linkable. Uh, you have the data, wherever they are, I don't mind. We are going to import them, go to get data import, right? So we understand the import. Go to the report, make sure that they are all connected properly. You can test them, you can test the connection, all right? The dates will not be connected, you can connect it yourself. You can create new columns, you can create new measures. So in the fact sales here, we had a new column here for the sales, all right? That's not a measure, that's a column, because you want to do this one for every line separately. It's not for the whole column, get me the sales, for each column separately. That's the sales, for example, as a column. We created two measures called sum of rep, which is going to sum this column, for the sum of rep previous year, and we introduced the whole topic of DAX. What do you mean by that? Functions that you can use inside the Power Pivot and Power BI. Some of them are exactly the same as in Excel. Some count average, maximum, minimum, like that are all them. Some of them are unique, like what? Uh, uh, like related, like uh, uh, calculate, which will override the filtering context. Like did add, go backward or forward in time. 
Now, Sammy, total YTD in quarter 20 days, the key year to date, quarter to date, month to date, previous year, year, you name it. Beautiful, right? This discussion, we spent five full days of uh, uh, intensive five days to explain a lot of these measures and how to create it. So I, I, I feel how stressful it can be to explain it in two hours, but I hope that I just get you a, a holistic view of how this is uh, working. And then we talked about the report. And this report here can have different visuals. We talked about the drill in, the drill out. We talked about the cross filtering and how important it is, a number of visuals. And you can import more visuals if you can go here and you say import from uh, a marketplace. You need to uh, uh, sign in in order for you uh, to be able to uh, uh, come into the Power BI. So that is uh, uh, the Power BI now that I'm getting into. And you can import more visuals that you want. A lot of other features, of course, I never talked about. So please. Uh, you have to start now finding out. Now the, the iceberg of fear is not there. It has been melted and it's up to you now to start finding out on your own. I wasn't born knowing all of this. It was all uh, uh, self-study, reading books, attending a course. Uh, uh, but you, you cannot stop. You cannot stop. And you have to practice by having this in your own company data. And that's exactly all what I do in all my courses. That during the course, you have to end up with at least two case studies that will enable you after the course, you're just going to continue. I'm not going to start from scratch because I don't trust you that after the course, you're going to start or within the course, you're going to finish two modules for me. So a lot of other uh, uh, dual KPIs, hierarchies, like, uh, la, 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 you can get it. And once you go down, uh, no, 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 more, 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 uh, no, 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 more, 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 more. You see guys, absolutely brilliant, really, uh, what you can do uh, 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 by, by having these other visuals that you can import. Once you like any one of them, uh, the, the Zebra BI tables, click on add, wait five seconds, boom, it will be added in your model. It has been added, here it is, and you can start using it, for example, all right? Um, the areas that you need to open your mind is, how can we share by publish first to the cloud, and then from the cloud, you are going to share. This area I never talked about. Accessing the data from different sources, uh, a lot of other DAX functions, a lot of other visuals. So areas have been opened up for you now, it's a shame on you if you don't go back to your, uh, to your own desktop and your own laptop and start finding yourself now reading a book. The iceberg of fear is not there. That's the power of these two hours that you can just have a hug. What is this topic about? And up to you now to take it further. So number one, excuse me that I took over my time, 15 minutes over my time. Uh, this is the time now for Q&A. So let's have... Uh, uh, an idea what your questions are. Uh, recommendation or visualization and templates. Uh, good, uh, good question. There are a lot of templates. There are a lot of visuals that are available out there. Um, so just to give you an idea uh, of a template, for example, uh, let me just open it up. Uh, 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 there are a lot of resources actually for this uh, templates, etc. I'm just going to open it up and I'm going to share the screen with you. So if you can just give me one second. Um, um, so the, okay, here we go. Here we go. So let me share the screen with you and you will be able to see what I mean by this example here. Okay, let me share the screen with you guys. So new share and I want to go to yeah, and share. Okay, here we go. I went to the internet. Uh, this is an example, just an example uh, of a website called Excel Lab. This Excel Lab has a lot of uh, nice examples. So that example, uh, let's say we have the sales team here. Let me expand it. This is our sales team. This is Wagner, Urban, da da da, uh, Pinori, and you want to to see one of them. Simply give it one click. It will open up the uh, uh, the dashboard of Wagner, for example. And this is, I want you to no, 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 no. Talk about profits, please. Uh, you know what, the year to date. No, 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 last 30 days. All of these are DAX. All of these on the left-hand side, they are DAX functions in order to enable having units, having profit, having year to date. Uh, last 90 days, like that, the date ad is used here. Uh, show me the previous year, you see what I'm saying? Uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then, no, 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 not show me in this one. Uh, what if, if I want to uh, focus on Hanover? Uh, no, show me everything. This is in a map. No, 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 show it to me as a bar, uh, for example, here. All right, so that's, I think go back. 
to the previous uh, uh, front phase. So a lot, a lot of my students, they had a sample like this uh, for their uh, model in people in Ghana, in Saudi, in Europe, in, in Asia. Uh, they modeled their case uh, 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 just like this one, for example. Uh, and a lot of other examples that are available out there as dashboard examples. If you go to Microsoft itself, they have a sample of Power BI uh, uh, ready made examples with the data, with the visuals, with the links, with everything. And just to uh, tease you with the headers, um, so you have an example about customer profitability sample. A whole example with everything, with the data, everything. A human resources sample for people in HR, for example. IT spend analysis, opportunity analysis, procurement, retail, sales and marketing, supplier quality, da 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 da, da. All right? So uh, there are a lot of resources. Uh, 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 you need to create one. The, the first one is the most powerful, but it's not the most, uh, uh, the, most uh, uh, the best one that you're going to be creating because it, from there it will build up. You will take an idea from this example, idea from this example. But if you keep on looking at just dashboards, uh, ready-made examples, you will not master it. You will only master it when you sit down and you create it on your own. That's the only way for you to master uh, this topic. Okay? Um, if I didn't answer your question uh, completely, please uh, uh, tell me and I will do my best to answer them. Okay? So this one uh, answered live. Okay. So another example in the Q&A. Uh, the sound is low. Oh my God, the sound is low. <laughs> I should have seen this long time ago. Um, okay, I'm sorry if you couldn't hear me. Maybe I, I raised my voice all the way. Uh, okay, are going to share any related documents? Us? Yes, I will share this example with you uh, with the same data that we have. I will share it with you. Um, what other questions that we have here? Uh, let's see other questions. Uh, participants cannot talk during Q&A session, just questions will be addressed. Uh, yes, <laughs> this is a comment more than a question. Yes, uh, uh, the voice is low, how BI is different than SAP. Oh, okay, uh, BI analysis tool or a data entry tool. Okay, how is it different? Uh, now, SAP is a database management system, uh, like Oracle, uh, uh, all of these, and these are uh, massive, massive, they can take huge data, excellent interrelationship. SAP on top has SAP business intelligence. Oracle has its own business intelligence. So all of these database management systems, they have their own business intelligence. But as I showed you at the beginning, they, they don't come close to the Power BI, even close to the Power BI. And I have to uh, show you this uh, to you one more time, which is uh, how to uh, compare between all of them. Uh, it's unbelievably the, 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 the difference now. Like all of these tools that you have there uh, doesn't come close to the uh, Power BI. So you can see here uh, where Microsoft compared to SAP, for example. The kind of flexibility, the kind of the uh, dynamic nature of it is not, all right? Okay, and what else? And okay. Um, Okay, this is done. Power BI, does it integrate with, yes, yes, it does integrate with Oracle SAP as we said. Yep, answered. Uh, can I download Power BI for Mac? Unfortunately not. Uh, can you recommend us how to upload a model sheet with DAXs to Power BI? Okay, this is a good example. This is a little bit different from what I said, but let me answer this question for you guys. If you remember in the Power BI, uh, boom, 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 where I am, here we go. So in the Power BI here, I said what, get data. So get data means you are getting raw data, raw. What if you have a Power uh, Pivot, uh, Excel spreadsheet with Power Pivot, also for those who don't know Power Pivot, it has data, it has relationships, it has columns, tables, but within your area of Excel, all right? So that was the predecessor of the Power BI. So Power BI, of course, it outstripped completely uh, uh, the, the, the power of the Power uh, Pivot. But if you have a model in Power Pivot, how can you uh, import it? That's a different word now. So what you need to do is to go to File, Import. And then you are going to say File, Import, what Power Pivot, and it will import the DAX, the columns, the measures, the tables, the data, the relations, everything that you have done in terms of DAX, uh, tables, relations, it will come straight to you. All right, hope it answered the question. Let's uh, see the other uh, 
questions. Um, uh, can you export a report as PDF? Yes, 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 uh, you can, but it's not that particularly uh, useful uh, because you will lose all of the uh, functionalities here. So all what you need to do is to say file publish and you can publish this one, uh, uh, I mean uh, export, I mean, sorry, uh, export it to PDF. But you are going to lose all of the functionalities of uh, the uh, uh, cross filtering and all of that, okay? Um, can you remind us how to up load oh yes we answered this one uh, what else boom 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 good questions guys can you export a pdf yes answered life can we make access to different pages example main page for all second page for only management i hit on the send a question and will can we make access to different pages example ah okay so you want to have uh, certain pages to be uh, viewed by some and certain yes you can but the best way for you to create it is to create a multiple reports so one report for the uh, c-level one report for the line managers one report for the marketing personnel way 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 better than having uh, certain pages etc okay but uh, the answer is yes um why do you use that very crucial the, i hope you understand the answer of this question by now please we use dax in order for us, okay, let me give another example of that. Let's say I would like to compare the sales of Ramadan during the previous years. Now, you know that Ramadan is different from each year to another. There is a DAX called dates between. So you are going to say calculate our sum of rev, but what's your overriding condition? The dates between this date and this date, which is Ramadan 2011. This date, this date, Ramadan 2012, for example. Right? I want year to date. There is no way that you can automate this one across all your filtering contexts in Excel. No way, no way. So you create this measure that's called year to date. How do you want to use it? Up to you now in your filter. By the revenue, by, I mean, the married single divorce, by the states, et cetera, et cetera. So very crucial. And use the DAX in the columns and in the measures. Okay, answer. If I have Excel financial model, can I be linked dynamically with the dash? Of course. Of course, but all what we need in Excel, remember that we, when we connect to Excel, we connect to tables only. We don't connect to your cell 15 and no, 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 no. Tables that has uh, columns, uh, uh, this is what we connect with, but we don't connect to this cell plus this cell minus this cell. It doesn't work like that. So in database memory system, whole columns, then we're going to import all of them. All right? Awesome. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Hamid. It was amazing and great presentation. The program really captured my attention, and I can see how that it would be a game changer in the future. Here, I have five, <laughs> five questions. How do you make sure that your data is up to date before doing analysis? Say, for example, you uploaded data from SAP today, and you want to redo the same analysis in two months' time. How do you update your source without losing your analysis in uh, Power BI? Okay. With regard to that update, it is really uh, a big story. As I told you, when you create the model in the Power Pivot, you are going to upload it to something called Power BI service. I never talked about this at all. Power BI service means this in the cloud, in the powerbi.com. And uh, powerbi.com, uh, this question comes from Murtada. Uh, hope you're there well, Murtada. Uh, I will send you what you want. <laughs> uh, this is a, a great friend. Um, what am I saying? Yes, you are going to raise it to the Power BI service. In the Power BI service, you have lots of options for the uh, update. You can say, for example, I would like to update now, refresh now. You can say uh, uh, scheduled refresh, like let's say, Murtada, that you are on a vacation, for example, and uh, nobody is taking your, uh, your, your phone. You can say update on every day at 6.40 a.m. So you know that 6.45, everybody using this model is going to be updated uh, fully for you. So there is a lot of discussion about this, refreshing the data, and your question is absolutely uh, on the point. Can you show year to date versus last year? Yes, 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 100%. So year to date, there is a DAX called total YTD. So you can create a measure called sum of rep YTD, which is total YTD of the sum of rep and you need the dates column. Then how can you make it previous year? We're going to use the calculate again. So sum of rep previous year, year to date. So it will be calculate the sum of rep year to date, comma, what they add uh, dates column minus one year. If you see the video again, you are going to uh, 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 get it right 100%, but it's 100% possible. Good question. Can you do what if, yes, yes. Ah, oh, good question. Uh, there is what if analysis, uh, uh, and these what if analysis, 
can end up with what we call uh, sensitivity uh, analysis. It's available, uh, and uh, you are going to create something called parameters. So uh, you say, what if uh, the sales increase by da, 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 and also you need to create measures for it. This is uh, the last layer of uh, complexity in terms of the power of the eye. So if you see that the, the first layer is reporting. The second, uh, which is what happened. The second layer is why it happened. Analyze this data, why it happened. The third layer of complexity uh, 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 is on time data. So I need to have the data on the spot, on the, as it happened. I don't want to wait for you Murtala, every month to send me the report. On the spot, I want it to happen. And then the last layer of, protect, uh, of, of complexity is what is the uh, predictive uh, analysis. And we do a lot of uh, artificial intelligence that's not in the course. We do it in our uh, 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 services as a modeling for companies that require, because it's really, really pretty complicated. We have done it for, for one of the uh, leading investment houses in uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. And uh, they, they wanted the predictive all the way to the year 2026. Can you do what if, an, yes, can you do revenue and marginal product mix? Of course, of course, of course. Um, you can do all of this and the, uh, uh, also what you can do is the uh, market share and all of this, all of this is with beautiful, beautiful DAX. Uh, you will use a DAX here called all except. Can I utilize the PBI with currency exchange, for example, in hedging the functional reporting currency? I fail to understand this question. Can I utilize the Power BI with currency exchange? If you mean that you want to uh, import data from, uh, let's say, for example, currency data that are from the internet, yes, you can. So you can say here, get data, and then you can say from web, web, and you can get the data from whatever website, and it will be uploaded to your, uh, uh, to your model on the spot. Okay? Excellent. We still have, yes, we still have time. Very good. Uh, so we have answered this one. Ahmed, my uh, pleasure to see you again. It was easy. <laughs> That's my friend from Kazakhstan. Take care and your family. So thank you so much for your comment. Lovely. Uh, we'll give you a course of da, 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 da. Yeah. Okay. And what else? Abdurrahman. I hope you are Abdurrahman from Oman. Can we take the data and how about Power BI? Are you uh, have a copy? Sorry. Can we take the data? Uh, if you to understand the question, Abdurrahman, if you come uh, live, we can give you the mic to, to explain your question better. Uh, so if you are there, and uh, Mele, can, can you put, uh, please, Abdurrahman, a mic? I, I didn't understand the question, really. How will this useful for SMEs? Very, very useful for SMEs. Actually, it is uh, uh, reported that SMEs can save tremendous uh, uh, cost compared to large companies uh, in terms of the power of the eye. Of course, saving cost, why guys? Because I don't need all of these uh, personnel in my company doing all of this kind of reporting, all of this kind of uh, uh, dashboarding in order for me to get these results. Um, uh, uh, and it is reported, so of course, large companies use it, like a company as big as Chevron is using it. Saudi, Saudi Airlines in Saudi Arabia is using it. Uh, uh, big companies, uh, Aramco, Sabic, uh, are using uh, uh, Power BI business intelligence. So this is telling you how, how powerful this is in big and small, uh, small companies. So definitely for SMEs, 100% uh, it's, it's useful as well. It will uh, use, again, Mont Carlo and forecasting. So no, there is no Mont Carlo and uh, forecasting as such as Mont Carlo in this one here, okay? Uh, is there any way auto refresh? Yes, as I said to Matada, you can auto refresh al al yes, uh, from the not from the Power BI, but from the Power BI service in the internet in the cloud. You can. There is something called uh, uh, scheduled refresh. Uh, can a financial model be built using business intelligence? Okay, that's a very good question. I want to answer this question. Uh, Power BI guys is not an Excel spreadsheet. So we cannot say this cell plus this cell minus this cell divided by this cell between this answer. So we have columns, columns, columns. So you need to have data base uh, that you have. And then this database, you are going to uh, upload it to your Power BI. So it's not similar to have a financial model like, for example, you have this cell plus this cell minus this cell divided by to get the feasibility study of a certain, no, no. So Excel will not die, uh, but Excel is not a reporting tool. That's the difference. 
So Excel will come to its proper location, which is what exactly like what you say now, building a financial model. Let's say we would like to have a hotel and would like to have a feasibility study of this hotel, for example. That's exactly where Excel is going to help you. That's not a database management system. You understand the difference? Okay. Another one. That's a good question. Um, can the Power BI provide what if example? Yes, yes, yes. As I, and there is a DAX for the regression. The answer is yes. Uh, but I'm not going to show it. It's called the parameters. What if using parameters? How can I download Power BI for Mac? Uh, okay. You need to have the Windows and then you can uh, download it. Um, so what is the difference between S and Power BI? Because some of the data can be found. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, now the Power BI, as you can see, it is a finished product. So it's, it's, it doesn't need a lot of coding from your side. There is a bit of coding, which is called the M language in the background, something called the Power Query. I never touched uh, at all. This is a subject of another advanced course that we are currently building which includes the coding and the R and the, uh, the M language for the Power Query for the, uh, for the update of the data. So it's a finished, finished product uh, that doesn't need a lot of coding. That's why it's an end user level. Uh, uh, that's the main power of the Power BI. It, it came down, you don't need to, be, uh, to have a PhD in data analysis in order to start using Power BI as you could see in this uh, discussion. Okay, when I finish my dashboards, does Microsoft have a server to publish it? Yes. If so, there is a privilege that can I give for each user? Yes, 100% yes, Saad. Saad al Um That's exactly what I said. Once you finish the dashboard, you can uh, upload it to the internet, <coughs> and uh, which is in a certain area, in your own area, in, in the area of Saad. Everyone has an, an area there that you can uh, publish, and then from the publisher, you're going to share. When you start sharing this, the only time we'll start charging you and you can designate this one is going to be shared with this uh, manager, with this manager, with this, or with this group of emails. And when you share it, you share it to who? To the people that are uh, uh, in the same domains as your tenancy contract. So let's say, for example, you are working in ABC company and your domain is abc.com. So you can share these dashboards with anyone who has abc.com or abcdubai.com or abclondon.com or abcfinance.com. All of them are in your tenants, you can share with them. But if you share it with Hamid at Leon on the training, for example, uh, uh, so Power BI will refuse because it will tell you that you are trying, for example, to share some private data to some, uh, some people outside the company, all right? So they will block you. Sometimes you need really to share uh, some data with the rest of the world, like what? Like you want to share a report with your bank, with your auditor, with your client, with your customer, with the government. So your IT can allow you to share on a case by case basis, but any time you're going to share with the rest of the world, your IT is going to be notified straight saying, why did you share it with this person? You didn't have permission to do this, et cetera, et cetera. So that's very great control uh, uh, for your dashboards. Okay, uh, what else? If I have a good knowledge of what you said today, what is next? That's a very good question, Amr Abdul Aziz, CFA. Um, what do you need to do next? What I really suggest you to do, there are now, our problem that we have nowadays is different from, let's say, 20, uh, 20 years ago. 20 years ago, you, you, you were always panicking. How can I get the information? That's why we said it's the information era, because there is abundance of information that is circulating. There are actually unbelievable sources that you can get this uh, through. You have books. You have YouTube channels that talk about Power BI. Uh, um, uh, you can uh, uh, start with your own. That's, that's exactly how you need to approach it, uh, Amr. You have to have your own first model for your own company. And then uh, you can uh, take this one to the next level uh, uh, by having an example from here, a ready-made example from here, etc. So books are there, YouTube are there, your case study must be the starting point. So start with an example, have some troubles, stop at a certain point. So when you are watching YouTube videos or you are reading, about, oh, that's how it can come here. Uh, oh, that's what I can do there. That's what I can do there, All right? Well, of course you can <laughs> attend our course, which is like, I, I, I swear to God, I mean, all 560 people that attended this course in the past year and a half, if you take anyone, uh, uh, and we always have this uh, said that if there is any single complaint from any single individual attending from a company, the whole course fee is waived. 100% is going to be returned. You will not hear this from Mila, but I can take this uh, that, that we didn't have a single complaint 
over the past year and a half from 560 people. Uh, of course, it's not that quick as I'm explaining it now. You are going to do what I'm doing step by step, and you are going to build the model with me step by step until you are going to reach a stage where you have the model. Then uh, I will push you to start applying your own company data. The only catch here is that we cannot accept one from a company. Uh, it must be two or uh, 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 at least two or three people because these people are going to share together uh, the report that they are going to be making. And you must share this one. No one can be working alone because you will be learning from each other. So you, I will divide you into teams. I will be supervising every team uh, while you have the course virtually as if I'm standing in front of you exactly the physical uh, classroom. Okay. We will be able to receive the recording. Yes, sir, Zahid. Uh, next one, how can I learn about forecasting on the balance sheet and income statement through Power BI? Okay. As I told you, there is parameters that you can have. Uh, it's a little bit tricky. So we need to have some kind of artificial intelligence on top of the Power BI. As I told you, this is the last layer, Amr. Uh, are you the same person? Yes. This is the last layer of complexity. So don't worry that much to answer this question now. This is the last layer of complexity. Uh, we are at the stage of reporting and why do we have these results? All right. So, okay. If I have a book, a good knowledge. Oh, sorry. So, yeah. Next one. Uh, can we update the imported data through Power BI or we should update the source? Is there any link? As I told you, the update, Ali, is going to happen from the service, as I was explaining from Ortada on top, uh, that you're going to say refresh now or you can have the scheduled refresh answered. Can we split tab to save each one in separate PDF file? Can we split tab uh, to save each one in a... No, 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 no. The, the PDF is going to come uh, for all the different pages, if you mean the pages, not tabs. We call it pages. So no, it will come in one PDF. Do you have any handout that you can share with us? Yes, I will share with you the, uh, the Excel spreadsheet and uh, this finished uh, model, uh, but not the write-up of the course, unfortunately. Okay. Um, boom, 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 boom. Can we export any created table on Power BI to Excel? Yes, yes. If you create any uh, one, uh, any table that you have, for example, uh, uh, so you can uh, say here, uh, 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 copy table, and then you can uh, do this one inside of the uh, Excel. You can simply, you see co this copy table, and then you can say Control V inside of your uh, Power BI. So the answer is yes, sir. Okay, uh, what is next? Um, boom, boom. So that's the opposite, that you have a table in Power BI and not to export it into Excel. Do you have to structure data in Excel first before using Power BI? Yes, yes, 100% yes. And that's the stage that will take a lot of time, Glory Kudzu. Uh, that's the stage that will take a lot of time from you, a lot of efforts in order to cleanse your data, make them linkable with each other. Uh, a lot of discussion about the primary keys, uh, how they need to be normalized uh, in, a, in a very good way. It doesn't have to be in Excel, of course, as I explained. It can be in any uh, data source. So, yes. Can I integrate with real-time data? 100% yes, which is super. This is the third layer, uh, as we said, of the complexity, the reporting, what happened, and then uh, on the spot, what happened now, the life. So the answer is yes. I need a sample for learning and development data. I will share with you this one. What if we have small data? Still fine. Uh, Josh Ulster, you can uh, still, uh, even if you have small data, you can, uh, uh, use it. Actually, it's better for a company startup uh, uh, to, to have this as early as possible because you have no idea how complicated it can last something like six, seven months uh, in one company. You can imagine the complexity of the data and all the kinds of reports that you have. Uh, you can spend six, seven months, one year even, uh, to, to end up with, with full streamlined uh, Power BI. So imagine that you started from the beginning with cleansing the data as you grow. So you will save a lot of cost, a lot of efforts uh, from the first time. How can I remove the filter uh, one time? Uh, ah, you mean if you have cross filtering and you would like to remove all the cross filtering. Uh, there is a possibility, something called uh, bookmarks. So bookmarks, you can take a bookmark of the data without any filtering and you can uh, move between the different bookmarks with just a click of a button to remove all the filters that you have. Search for something called bookmark, bookmark. Uh, to do this exactly. Okay. Uh, how can I, yes, answer this. Can you show year to date 
versus budget versus last year in the same chart? Yes, you can, of course. Uh, uh, wait a second, year to date versus budget versus last year. So let's, let's say year to date actual with year to date budget, with year to date of the previous year, 100% possible. 100 percent possible uh, 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 as long as all of them are year to date so in order for it to be apples with apples 100 percent but you need to create three measures now uh, uh, and the year to date there is a dax called total ytd a quarter to date total qtd total mtd just search them and you can uh, plug them all in a column chart or a bar, uh, a bar chart so the answer is yes we have until uh, seven o'clock guys so i have 17 minutes i still see a number of questions if I fail to answer them, I will be uh, answering all of them and I will be putting them in a video for you guys uh, in addition to this uh, two hours uh, session that we have. So we are going to finish in 17 minutes. If you can bear with me, please. Uh, good questions coming uh, from all of you. As per your explanation, in case we need to have the reporting, we need to upload the fresh file in order to get the up-to-date data, right? 100% right. Ah, no, but not every time. You just need to refresh, huh? Just for me to make sure. Yes, you, yes. So you don't need to upload it again and again. You just need to click on refresh and that's it. Uh, uh, so you click on refresh once off and then the data is going to be uh, refreshed for you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, only my pleasure, Saud uh, Osaimi. And from Soraya. Soraya in uh, Malaysia. For Sur okay. I uh, you know a close friend in Malaysia called Soraya. Let's have a look. What's your question? Um, bom, bom, Suraya. What if I want to say, I want separate filters on separate page tabs. Is the data on each page linked to the first page? Yes, that's a very good uh, question, Suraya. Uh, you can have different filters <coughs> in a certain tab, and you can have filters across the whole, uh, what we call report. When you don't call it tabs, you call it pages. And in addition to that, you can have link between uh, 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 the slices, for example. So let me show you how quickly. So if you are here, and this is the year 2011, 2012, let's say, for example, okay? And I can copy this one, Control C, and I can put it here in page two, for example, Control and D. Check what will happen and press Control D. It will tell you, do you want to sync it? What do you mean by sync it? If I click here and sync, that's 2012. If I put it here 2011, if I go back to, 20, to page one, you see 2011. 2012, go back, you see 2012. So it's now linked with each other. Uh, just copy paste, and when you paste it, you are going to sync it with the whole model. All right, so cool. Okay, next one uh, is Power BI. I said software, a Microsoft product. Is it already worldwide? Use? Yes, 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 100% worldwide use. It's only five years old, but it took the world less than five years, four and a half years old, and it took the world by storm since then. Uh, very, very powerful tool used all over the world. Uh, still predominantly big, 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 huge actually in the USA, but started invading a big time. We did our part in the GCC region. Across the GCC, it started, we started penetrating. We, uh, Alhamdulillah, I was the first to start putting it in big, big, mega companies in the, in the some of them are some of the biggest in the whole world, um, to start integrating this into the DNA of these companies. Um, and the decision making is unbelievable. Wallahi, uh, Mele can share with you some of the testimonials that we had from these companies. Uh, so thank you so much, answered. Uh, David, uh, David Germany, or, okay. Uh, Devor, the data from the SQL uh, server is changing all the time. Will it be reflected in the Power BI report with refresh? Yes. Well, either when you click refresh or the schedule refresh. Once you click refresh or schedule refresh, it will be, it will be uh, streamlined. And you can have schedule refresh every single time. You don't want the data to be 100%. To be so you can make the data refreshing every month, uh, every, I mean, every hour or so. You don't need intra hour uh, data, for example. Uh, you can make it every three hours, but you don't want it to be 100 so that if there is one number, because it will affect your performance. Uh, but it is going to be live once you start refreshing. Answer. I need to export each one individually. Export what, sorry. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Export. Uh, export to where? Uh, Ahmed Dosari. Uh, Ahmed, how are you? Uh, export. Explain this to me, Ahmed, please, uh, if you can, uh, below. I need to export each one individually. Each page, for example. Or each what? Um, another question from 
we have 30 minutes to go. Do you update your uh, records in a monthly basis? Do you update? You don't have to. You, do, you can do it daily, uh, intraday, as I said to you. All right. Uh, can we use Power BI to build full financial system? Yes, 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 hundred percent. Yes, you can build the whole financial statements from scratch all the way to building financial statements. And there are a lot of examples, very nice examples, but it's a little bit complicated in terms of the DAX, but it is possible, hundred percent possible. How can we get the Power BI? Go to powerbi.com, my dear, and you can download it for free. Powerbi.com. Uh, if I update the Excel sheet, will it be updated on Power BI as well? Yes, 100%. Uh, once a click, refresh will be updated. Or do I need to create a new model? No, you don't have to create a new model. Just click on refresh, then it will be done uh, straightforward for you. So uh, uh, once you click refresh here in home, it will be updated straightforward for you. Uh, so if I go back to Excel, for example, now, and I change anything, you don't have to upload it again. Just click refresh here, and that's it. Okay. Sweet. Another one. Uh, Answered. Okay, so let's see another question. But uh, from anonymous, uh, but when using DAX for normal sum, max, minimum, that is, it's a bad way. Okay, good question. Because you have uh, uh, embedded what we call implicit uh, DAX functions or implicit measures that can be created, which is the sum, count, average, max, and minimum. Why the hell do you want to create a DAX for these ones here that we have? I agree with you on this part here, and you can use the implicit measures, but come here. Uh, 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 what if I need year to date, quarter to date, year, last year, year and date? I need special, especially for this period, uh, for the month of Ramadan. I bought this one compared to last year, well, five years ago. How are you going to create all of this mess and all of the ad hoc requests that they have? And to be streamlined, 100%. Like, get me, uh, I want the sales that are more than, that took more than 5% discount. All right? and give it to me across any uh, context that I want. So give me all the sales that I have given more than 5%, marital status, married single divorce. No, 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 the high school graduate. No, 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 for this season. No, 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 for this month versus last month. Do you, under, do you understand now and you believe me why you need to have 1,100 slides in your PowerPoint presentation to explain all of these facts? Because each and every click is one uh, uh, slide in your PowerPoint. It's a snapshot in your PowerPoint, all right? Okay, awesome. Can I publish a report on an intranet page? Yes, you can. That's so sweet and so nice as well. And you can share it in the internet uh, or intranet as well for both. This not from uh, Power Pivot, it's from the Power BI service. Uh, you can embed it in any uh, uh, website. So if you would like to share with the rest of the world uh, some information for your clients or for whoever, you can just, after you finish the report, instead of you sharing it with, uh, with your manager, you can share it with the rest of the, uh, with the rest of the world in your website. It will give you a link. You will go to the website developer and say, please, uh, we need to have a separate page. Uh, and this is the link. And it will, be, it will be live link. Once you click refresh, the Power BI service will be refreshed and your model in the uh, internet or the internet is going to be refreshed as well. And does Power BI support real-time data? Yes, sir. And can Power BI be a KPI dashboard? 100% yes. And you can put this Power BI, many of the companies that we helped before, they have a big screen, for example, in the sales team with Power BI presentations showing how much we have reached, how much our, uh, our, from our target of the KPI, who is lagging, who is performing very well. And this can be live streaming, and every day it would be really stimulating when you come and you see the KPIs every single day. Imagine that you are going to, to, to populate this every month versus every day, for example, that you see it in front of your eyes. It, it's huge incentive. And those who are lacking behind, they can be like really wake up, wake up. Ah, all right. And so, uh, is there any trial version? You don't need a trial, my dear. It's the full version for free. Can we update the imported data through Power BI or we should update the source? Is there any link? Let me repeat again. Can we update the imported data through Power BI? Can you update? If you mean refresh, yes, 100%. Or we should update the source. Ah, no, 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 in the Power BI. In the Power BI itself, once you click on refresh, it will update the data. It's a, as I showed you now from clicking refresh. Now I understand. From Ali, oh, Ali Salai, Mahabi. Hamid, please tell me about forecasting and how it works. Uh, forecasting, Ali, is, as I told you from the previous questions, it's, uh, it's the trickiest part. 
and you need to build what we call scenarios. Uh, a lot of acts get involved there, and it's the last layer of protection within the time space that we have there, impossible for me even to touch on it. But you will create something called parameters. Um, okay, and uh, from Abdurrahman, if there is any update to my raw data, how can I burn the business? Data? Just click refresh. If the raw data is uh, uh, just by clicking refresh here, anything in the raw data is going to come there, Abdurrahman. From Anis, hello, is it possible to save template per user? So each time when they open the app, user will have their data on the dashboard. Yes, you can, you can assign roles. There is something in the Power BI called assign roles and it can answer this question for you. So you can uh, definitely do that. Okay. Uh, hi, Hamid from Jihad Ghanim. Hi, Hamid, is the only use of DAX limited to filters or if there is any other uses? Uh, like filters means what you you create a DAX, uh, you use a DAX in a column or in a measure. How are you going to use this column and a measure? It's up to your filtering context now. So because all what you are doing now is some visuals, and you can have tables as well if you want. Because after all of these beautiful visuals, they say no, no, no. I still want to see in the form of a table. There is something called table here or matrix in your uh, Power BI called table called matrix, um, and you can have all of them. Uh, 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 using the DAX functions that you have created. And then the filtering context is what makes it lively because you need the cross filtering, uh, of course, in order for you to be able to, uh, to, to, to see, for example, uh, the power of it. Okay, uh, we still have six minutes to go. And let me take a couple of more questions quickly. Do I think we skipped the question? What is the question? How we uh, got access for BB? Uh, just go to powerbi.com. Powerbi.com. It's a Microsoft uh, uh, website, and you will see start from uh, start free. Uh, download it. You will download it immediately. You will have the Power BI uh, in your desktop. Okay. The only time they will start charging you once you start sharing, and you have six days trial that will allow you to uh, to go uh, without paying. Any example for PNL for the balance sheet with year on year comparison? Yes. A lot of examples. If you just type, like you will be surprised, guys. If you go just to the internet and you type Power BI example financial statements, for example, Allah, I bet you millions of answers that you are going to be getting. That, but this is not how you are going to learn Power BI, and this is not how you are going to take it there. Start with your own model for your company and squeeze yourself until you are stuck. And when you are stuck, please, please, please don't make me as your first point of reference because I'm I'm too busy already. Uh, 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 go and search and go and find YouTube and go and find books and find uh, 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 whatever source for you to update. I cannot answer questions for hundreds of people every day for, uh, in this webinar, of course I can, but all right, so your big friend in life is Mr. Google. Thanks for answering my question from your friend, Javi. Oh, oh, Khaled. <laughs> okay, Adil Ahmed from Saudi Alliance. Uh, as usual, you are amazing, and I'm sure that with your knowledge in BI, people will be having a great deal. Thank you so much. Thank you, Adam. I really appreciate your comment. Uh, if I need to update the data, I should upload all data from beginning or what? Yes. Or you have a model, as I explained to you, to you before, that you can import. You can, up, you, you can load the data by getting uh, get data, or you are going to import the full data if it's uh, with all the racks and all of that from Excel. From Anonymous, do you have any tips on how to clean and organize scattered data to be able to... Oh, yeah. Assuming that the data is currently scattered and not organized properly. Do we need to build a data management framework first? Okay, this is a very good question. Uh, this is a million dollar question, actually. Uh, there is something called structured and unstructured data. And for big data analytics and big data specialists, uh, this is a big field, which is what's structured, what's unstructured. Like, if we, Let me give you an example of what's unstructured. If you have structured, like what, what I told you now, columns, base, da, da, da. A uh, uh, unstructured or semi-structured data, like your emails, for example. Your emails, you receive tons of emails. And I would like to, to have analysis for these emails. Yes, you know the sender, the receiver, what time, uh, the address, uh, email address, uh, what, uh, stuff like that. So that's why semi-structured, because we can build database for, from all of these headers. But what about the contents now? You understand? This is where we, where the artificial intelligence is going to be super, super nice to be complemented with the Power BI, hand in hand. 
This is exceptionally complicated, and it needs uh, 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 analysis uh, and artificial intelligence, a lot of coding. Uh, but it's not impossible. You know, the, 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 the only thing that I can tell you anonymous that's impossible or you can reach when you, when it's something that's not created by humans, like, like you can see a virus, a coronavirus, ah, it's, we cannot create a vaccine for this one. I can agree with this because it's, it's, it's not human, uh, uh, for example, it's, it's, sorry, why the cockroach leg is like this, not like this, we can spend all our lifetime and we don't know the answer, for example, because it's not human made. But all what we are talking about here is human made. If there is something human made, there is no way in the world that you not understand. No bloody way. All what you need to do is just to understand the merit, where it came from, and you have a build-up process. That's, then you can go all the way to the moon. Uh, uh, so don't, don't buy into these arguments that say this is impossible. You, you just need to build it up step by step. Then you're going to, to have all of this iceberg melted down. So now, you understand something about Power BI when you talk about it, when you speak to your colleagues, when you speak to your management, we have this tool, we have to get into it. And there are reports that says uh, investment in Power BI or business intelligence, I mean in general, has 1,300% return, which means every dollar spent in business intelligence will get your reward of $13 within a period of five years. Why? Faster decision making. Uh, accuracy that you are going to have, uh, cost saving that you are going to have, revenue increase that you have, better response to customer complaints, Etc. I was in Oman just a couple of uh, weeks ago, and this company was uh, 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 responding to about 150 sort of clients a day. Uh, and they used uh, a manual process in all of this discussion. You see the, 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 the kind of interaction that you will have with the power of the eye, and you can have alerts as well. You can say in the alerts, if this increase beyond a certain limit, send me a message in my cell phone that just like the WhatsApp message that you get, you are going to get a message uh, uh, that says to you that this amount increased beyond a certain limit, went or below a certain limit, etc. etc. All right, so uh, my answer is yes. So I think we have reached now the time. It's uh, seven o'clock now. Uh, where is it from here? As I told you, uh, these two hours, I hope it melted the iceberg of fear between you and business intelligence. It's not something out of uh, this world. It's, it's very doable. It's very interesting. It's uh, very crucial for your career, for your reporting. And please, 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 for the God's sake, don't think that, that now I can uh, 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 like go and, and, and say that I'm master in Power BI. You have to start building and step by step. If I teach you ABC, it will not make you Shakespeare in the second day. But you need to have this kind of progress step by step. And the best starting point is to have your own case study built in your company data, be stuck, at a certain level, then go to YouTube, go to have a book, attend the course, et cetera, et cetera, until you uh, master uh, uh, this topic, all right? So one more time, thanks to all of you attending. Uh, I think we had about 29 countries coming. I'm not sure how far the time is in your countries. Uh, thanks to all of you. Looking forward to uh, meeting you all and hearing uh, 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 from you the progress. Please share your comments with Mele, uh, how we can improve this, uh, uh, webinar further, uh, 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 what other uh, topics uh, that are very crucial in your mind or uh, uh, regarding the current circumstances that you are all going through that we can assist you with. That's exactly what we do at Huron. We are a development institution, which means that we are there to develop you uh, and develop your companies. So Mele, I will give you the last word to uh, close. Are you there? Yes, I'm here, of course. Um, so Thank you, everyone. It was really interesting to, to have more than 250 people. Uh, there were people from 36 countries, actually. So, Hamad, this was uh, our most international training so far. <laughs> it was very interesting. Uh, very nice questions. I recorded all the questions, so there are a lot not answered. And we'll get back to the to, to our participants with them later, right? Yeah, if, if, if I see, like, I saw a lot of questions that are repeated. Okay. If I any uh, sort of uh, good question that will add value at this stage, etc. Instead of my answer being no or yes or whatever, uh, uh, I will definitely answer them. And Mele is going to attach them to the, uh, the actual webinar. He will send you a link to the video. You can share it with your colleagues, uh, uh, spread the knowledge, make, make it part of the culture that must spread uh, wherever you are. 
and uh, uh, my questions will be attached to it. The rest of the questions are need to be attached to it. And excuse me if I if I didn't have time to answer all the questions uh, in this webinar. All right, so, great. I'll, I'll send the questions. I'll send the information about the course. I'll send some extra information about Power BI. And uh, when is the course uh, scheduled, uh, Mila? Sorry again. Uh, when is the coming Power BI course scheduled? The virtual course. Yeah, this will be on May third until May seventh. May 3rd, it's, it's excellent uh, timing. Uh, you are not working as much in Ramadan. Uh, so it will be the perfect, perfect time for uh, a few guys in the uh, region here in the GCC, um, uh, even Kazakhstan is not uh, going to be too a big time difference. Uh, for people in Europe, if there is a specific um, a company request, I can adjust the time for you guys. Uh, for people in Africa, the same story. Uh, I saw that there are people from Brazil uh, uh, it's quite early for them now in the morning, so we can like we can have different uh, sessions for different uh, time slots. So with absolute pleasure uh, for uh, thank you so much for coming, and uh, I hope you learned something. And all the best for the coming webinar. Thank you very much. Love you all. Thank you everyone. Bye. Bye bye.